decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to this hour and all who have gathered in this space physically or digitally. God, we love you and we honor you for this opportunity. Now bless all of us to hear you, dear God, in a fresh way. And most of all, God, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our great redeemer, and the people of God said, amen. Amen. Greetings. Greetings and great morning to all of you. I first give all honor and praise to God and um, who is truly the head of my life and has been for a long time. Um, I am grateful and I honor Pastor David Kennebrew for the invitation to share with you all on this morning and to all of the Freedom Fellowship family and friends and guests, um, we are excited to be here on this morning. I will, um, my, my testimony will be grounded in one of my favorite passages of scripture, Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. I won't read all of that for the sake of time, but um, just so you know where we are in the text, um, basically Jesus has um, just finished feeding thousands and he sends the multitudes away and he also sends the disciples away on the boat. And, um, and as they're traveling, a storm ensues and um, they get a little scared. And then they see this figure walking on the water. And, um, but Jesus tells them, be of good cheer. It is I, do not be afraid. And then Peter says in verse 28, he says, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Um, if I had to choose a subject for my talk on this morning, it would simply be, I only stepped out because I believed. I only stepped out because I believed. And friends, if you do decide to heed the Lord's call or the Lord's command in your own life to step out of the boat, I want you to know um, that if you just keep your eyes on Jesus, once you step out of the boat, you will walk on water. 
I want you to know this, that this is my testimony. You will go where no one in your life has gone before. Um, and you will have the kind of freedom that only faith can handle and the kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. Your faith will lead you to walk further and further away from that boat because you will have to say yes every day and your walk will be a witness to those inside the boat that God really is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask, think, or believe. You become what is possible if they would only believe. I only stepped out because I believed. I have never shared this story in public. I have only shared it with a few close friends and very safe and private spaces. And only when I felt led to encourage someone at a very particular time. I have never shared this story in public. And while I am proud of my story, I have cried many tears and endured must much rejection and isolation because I only did what I had been taught to do. I believed God. I grew up in church. I am a preacher's kid and I am a girl. I learned the books of the Bible. I memorized passages of scripture in the Bible. I fell in love with the God of the Bible and I am a girl. I believed in God. I trusted in God as my God's son, as my savior. I relied on the guidance, the comfort, and the teaching of the Holy Spirit. And I am a girl. I was taught that you can do all things, all things, all things through Christ who gives you strength. And I believed it. <laughs> I was taught that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free, neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And I believed it. I was taught that before God formed me in my mother's womb, God knew me. And before I came out of my mother's womb, God sanctified me and called me. And God had already set me aside to do God's work in the world. And I believed it. I believed it all. And I am a girl. Then I experienced Matthew 14. I admit that my chapter in life lasted much longer than the summary I gave you. Um, however, I, like the disciples, I was going along in the safety of my boat that had been built by my family and friends and church members and Sunday school teachers and so many others who loved me and poured into me and sacrificed for me. I was riding along in the safety of my boat and that had been created by their prayers and their doctrines, their discipline and their truth. But then the storm of my life brought about by the clash of my gender and my tradition was released in the atmosphere as I pursued my destiny and struggled with the shift of the direction of this call from the Lord who was now calling me to step out of the boat. But Lord, I am a girl. I, 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 and for years, as far back as my teenage years, I remember telling the Lord, Lord, I am a girl. The Lord was calling me and I could see glimpses of the Lord walking on the water in my life. But this storm was raging in my body and in my spirit, in my church and in my family with my destiny and my desire to obey. Lord, I know you understand the situation I am in. I will say yes, but let me stay in the boat. Because if I say yes without parameters, 
without limits, without boundaries, I will have to get out of the boat and I will have to walk on water. Lord, I don't know any girls in my life who have done that. I don't have anyone in my life that I can talk to. I don't have anyone in my life who will support that. Lord, please let me just say yes. But inside the familiarity and comfortability of this boat. And for many years, the Lord allowed me to do that. The Lord allowed me to stay in the boat mercifully withholding his wrath because I kept telling the Lord that I am a girl. Then in 2002, I was entering into my final year of law school and the Lord appeared again on the water and told me that in this next year, you will have a decision to make. Your decision will be to either follow me or stay in the boat. In the fall of 2003 and for my entire first year of seminary, I wrestled because I knew what it would cost for me to step out of the boat. And I also knew what it would cost for me to stay in the boat. And in my heart of hearts, I was willing to risk everything to be obedient to what I knew the Lord was calling for me to do. You see, the issue was never about my gender for the Lord. See, the issue, the call to preach was always about my obedience to all of the scripture I said I believed. In the spring or summer of 2004, I decided that I did not want to risk being disobedient to the one who I knew, who I knew, knew that I was a girl when he called me. And so, I stepped out of the boat and I have been walking on water ever since. Friends, <laughs> I don't know what your boat looks like. I don't know how long you have been wrestling uh, within yourself to stay in the boat. I do not know how many excuses you have made to keep the boat exactly where it is. I do not know anything about your boat. All I know is that ever since I stepped out of mine, I have walked on water and in true freedom as God has used me, this girl, to live out the call that God placed upon my life. See, when I stepped out of the boat, <laughs> the Lord told me, he gave me very specific instructions. The Lord told me, I do, do not argue about your call. I will defend you. <laughs> the Lord told me, you do not have to prove to anyone that you are called. I will cover you. <laughs> the Lord instructed me just to live it. <laughs> just live it. And I will handle the rest. It is out of my obedience that God chooses to use this vessel, this girl, this female, this creation who happens to be in a girl's body to proclaim the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Now I can only imagine the thoughts of Peter as he sat in the boat wrestling within himself while in the midst of this storm. Jesus had sent them ahead and into this turbulent time. A few chapters earlier, Jesus was with them in the boat when the storm um, arose. He was asleep, but he was there. But now he was not physically um, with them in this boat. Yet Jesus had to know that a storm was on the way. And I believe that Jesus also knew 
that it was time to put the disciples, to put what the disciples said they believed to the test. So Peter is in the boat and is probably experiencing a tinge of fear as, as the other disciples and as he sits with his friends. And in the fourth watch of the night between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., Jesus went to them walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him walking, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out in fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them as he continues to speak to you and to me even today no matter what storm you may find yourself in Jesus says be of good cheer it is I do not be afraid then Peter takes the Lord at his word Peter believed the word and in the person of the son of God and Peter prays Lord if it be you Bid me to come. I can only imagine the likely insults and shaming that the disciples shouted at him. I can imagine the side eyes, the backbiting, the doubting, the accusatory tones, and the degrading remarks simply because he wanted to follow Jesus. I can imagine it because I experienced it. He... And I wanted to experience Jesus in a way that he and I had never experienced Jesus before. You see, in those days, there was an ancient belief that um, there were monsters in the sea. And seeing this shadowy figure walking toward them on the water, surely that could not be Jesus. Jesus does not look like that. Jesus does not sound like that. Jesus would not use that. I know Jesus. Jesus doesn't speak through her. Jesus can't speak through him. We know Jesus, and that ain't him, except that it was. It was Jesus doing the unexpected the unpredictable, the unprecedented in the middle of a storm. It was Jesus doing what they had never seen or heard before. It was Jesus moving in their lives in a different kind of way. It was Jesus. And Peter was the one who believed. I believe God and I, much like Peter, pray, Lord, if it be you. I hear what people are saying, but Lord, if it be you. I cannot tell in the midst of this storm in my life or my family with my church and all that is familiar with me. Lord, if it be you. Um, I am a girl. <laughs> I am a fisherman. I am just this or I am just that or I don't have this or I don't have that. And I usually stay in the boat, but I really don't want to miss this opportunity to experience the miraculous in my life. So, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. Lord, invite me to do something different. Lord, Invite me to be a light in this dark world. Lord, invite me to be a peacemaker and a justice worker. Lord, invite me to do the greater work that you promised that we would do. Lord, invite me to experience freedom in you. Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. And the Lord said, come. And when Peter was stepped down out of the boat, he walked on water to go to Jesus. In August 2004, I stepped all the way out of the boat <laughs> when I preached my very first sermon. I have been walking in freedom and walking on water ever since. And... I am still a girl. <laughs> but I only stepped out because I believed. I admit that it has not always been easy. I have experienced 
loneliness and there were times when I second, third, and fourth guess drowning due to my own fear of staying outside of the boat, drowning due to the rejection I have experienced because I stepped outside of the boat and drowning due to the loneliness while in the company of those I love. I have cried out to the Lord, Lord, save me. And the Lord has brought me into safe spaces that have affirmed God's call and my obedience to it. And for that, I am forever grateful. In this text, the Lord did help Peter um, to get back into the boat that he had stepped out of. But I believe that because of his fear, Peter missed the opportunity to walk on water all the way to the other side. Friends, if you decide to heed the Lord's call or command in your own life to step out of the boat, I want you to know that if you just keep your eyes on Jesus, once you step out of the boat, you will walk on water. You will go where no one in your life has ever gone before. But in God, you will experience the kind of freedom that only faith can handle and peace that surpasses all understanding. Your faith will lead you to walk further away from the boat because you will have to say yes every single day. And your walk will be a witness to those inside the boat that God really is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ever ask, think, or believe. You become what is possible if others would only believe. Friends, I have two questions that I want to leave you with on today. One, how has the Lord invited you to walk on water in your own life lately? And two, have you accepted or rejected the invitation of the Lord and why? For if you decide to heed the Lord's call or command in your own life to step out of the boat, I want you to know that if you just keep your eyes on Jesus, once you step out of the boat, you will walk on Amen.